Hi, and thank you so much for joining me today for the last day, day 31 of 30 Days of Sketches with Christie's Beautiful Life. Um, today's sketch is by Jennifer Gang, and um, I'm using 49er Market Art Options Alina to scrap a photo of my daughter Amelia when we were on holiday this summer. Um, it's not actually for the summer album per se, it's just a where you're at layout, like I did for James a few videos back if you've been watching my videos regularly, just um, that she's 15 and what she enjoys and uh, where she's at in her life, so to speak. So I love this sketch from Jennifer, um, all the layouts behind the, the photo and the, sorry, the layers behind the photo and that's what I'm working on now. Um, just I pulled out some papers and I want to do a clear um, colour quadrant this time of the aqua at the top, the orange to the left, red at the bottom and yellow to the right. So I'm just being careful how I choose my papers to layer behind this photo. I've got the red behind Amelia because she's got red on her t-shirt and there's red on the um, parasols behind her or on the beach in this photo um, just at the local cafe, the cafe where we were. Um, so I've got the aqua at the top of the photo now and I'm working on putting some um, orange on and at first I have it at the bottom but I do move that, I do change that and I move the orange to the left hand side which is where the orange quadrant will be. So this is one of the um, ephemera pieces that I've put as a mat at the back of the photo and I like that because it's quite neutral and it grounds everything. Um, and I'm just looking through to see what else. I'm just having a quick look at the 6x8 papers to see the exact colours I've got available to me. I wanted to see if there was a brighter red, but there isn't really. So um, just auditioning different pieces, trying to work out what to do. I don't really want to add a floral because it's not a hugely floral um, layout. So this does look really pretty down there, but it doesn't, it doesn't make it this time round. So... I keep faffing and messing and trying to find out exactly what to put here, but we get there in the end. So while I'm doing this, please do go and check the description box down below to see everybody else who's joining in on this hop. It's been an amazing month with some fabulous sketches, all created especially for this um, hop. Christy does a brilliant job, so thank you very much, Christy, if you ever watch this. I really appreciate it. Um, and do like my video if you enjoy it and subscribe to my channel. I would love it if you would. Um, thank you to everybody who has subscribed. I really do appreciate that so much. So back to the video. Here I am with another ephemera piece and I'm just tearing off the bottom because it was a little bit too big for me. And um, now I'm finally happy with the placement of all those layers. So going in with my double-sided tissue tape to just stick that down um, before we carry on. So as always, I'm creating this as one big mat that I can lift off the main page and add some um, different pieces to the background, some mixed media and stamping and things. So just working through one layer at a time with my double sided tape and sticking all these down. So just getting the edges of that ephemera piece distressed like all the other pieces that we've got in this mat and then that will be the the basic photo mat finished really happy with that and from the laser cut pieces i found this piece saying be happy be you and i thought that was just perfect for this page and um the theme that i'm going for of it being about amelia and her life so just pop that up on some foam tape to make it stand up a bit and then gluing that final mat down. Mm -hmm. 
And now that central part's finished, I want to start working on the four flags that we have going around the page. Um, so I'm using this Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous stamp. You'll have seen me using this before with my usual technique of using the Distress Oxide ink and then watering it down slightly with my paintbrush. Um, this is the speckled egg colour that I'm using for this um, turquoise quadrant at the top. And then I'll move round, just quickly clean that colour off and do the next colour. So the next one that I'm doing is Dried Marigold and that will go on the left hand side. Exactly the same technique, so adding the ink to the stamp and just on the bit that I'm actually stamping down, it doesn't need to go all the way across. And popping that down with the water, just moving the paper a little bit to get the water to move about. And now that Dried Marigold is down, I'm going in with my Candy Dapple, my red, and this will go on the bottom. So exact same, just adding some water. So it stamps like a watercolour, but you've still got the control of exactly the shape that you're having down there. And finally, the yellow, and I think it was fossilised amber, let me check. Oh no, antique linen, which is sort of a, a more muted yellow. That's right, I mixed the two, fossilised amber and antique linen. I didn't want, the fossilised amber is a very bright yellow and I didn't want it to be too, too bright on here. So really pleased with the mixture of those two there. So just need to wait for those to dry a little bit and then um, I shall work on the next part. So bringing that photo in just to check that I'm happy with the positioning of those, which I am. And then drawing my pencil line so that I can add some mixed media behind this. And for this I'm going to go in with my black soot ink pad and my dark room door grid stamp which again you will have seen me using before i absolutely love it to create a really graphic look behind the photo so just double checking that that's central and then grabbing my black soot ink and here's the stamp and i can start and i'm just adding the ink to the edge of the stamp because i don't need to stamp behind the photo it's going to be covered so just going up the sides and around the top and back down So just adding the last stamp piece and then I'm going to bring the photo in to check I'm happy with the placement. Um, and you can see it just peeks out from behind that photo. That's perfect, that's exactly what I was looking for. And now I'm going to add that same grid stamp to these four quadrants, the um, flags on the edge. So I'm using some washi tape just to mask off the stamp bit I don't want to add the ink to. And then um, I shall add this stamp to each of these flags. Now you'll see this red one works really nicely. The uh, painted, the ink is nice and dry, but I was a little bit too overzealous with the yellow quadrant and it does bleed a bit. I should have waited a bit longer, <laughs> but I'm just too impatient um, to wait for that to dry. But I, I do solve that later on. I just cover up with some embellishments and it's fine. So onto the blue and then the orange. And you'll see here, I learnt my lesson with the <laughs> yellow one. I've dabbed up the excess water there on the orange before stamping over it lightly. So again, you'll see each time I use my washi tape to mask off when I'm inking up the stamp before removing it so it doesn't smudge all over. And that's a great way of using a bigger stamp in a small area. You can just mask off the areas you don't want to ink with your washi tape and then um, stamp it down. So now adding that big photo mat to the layout, um, I've used my 6225mm foam pads to raise it up off the layout so that it's the focal point and just using my T-ruler to check that everything's straight there before I push it down in place. So now that's all done, I want to start embellishing the layout and I want to keep those colour quadrants as they are. So adding teal, tealy blue or 
aqua to the top, yellow to the right, orange to the left and red to the bottom. And I had, before I started recording this video, before I started making the layout, pulled out all of those colours into different groups above my layout just to make it easier. So I went through the chipboard pack, the laser cut ephemera, the die cut ephemera um, and the, did I say the chipboard? The chipboard anyway. So just going through and adding pieces. And it takes a little while to find the balance, but I get there in the end and the overall layout is wonderful once it's all done, but it just takes a little bit of time finding out. I didn't want to overwhelm those clusters around the edge of the layout. So it's just finding pieces that are small enough that look really nice there. And um, I think I end up with three, two or three pieces on each, sorry, two pieces on each of them, I think it is. Um, coming in with the 49er Market tickets now to, for the yellow and red. Um, I do love these tickets and stamps. They really add something to the layouts. Um, I do want more of the colours eventually. And there are so many on a roll. You could easily split these with friends. I think when I counted up, there were 20 repeats on the roll or something. So plenty to last a lifetime for sure. So just coming in with the red stamp here. At first I add it to the orange and then I realise that that's the orange <laughs> section. So move it down to the red. I think some of the stamps in this roll are sort of orangey red, so you could easily easily use them on either. So just finding something that's a little bit more um, of a blue red to add down there. So very happy with the way that those are looking and now I just want to find some other bits to add around the actual layout itself. Just adding one of these pale blue stamps up there so that we've got two pieces added to that cluster as well. So these blue leaves really bring in the blue. It's a much deeper blue than the rest of the bits in the collection. So uh, I like those there. Um, while I'm thinking about what to do, I just add my journaling down the left hand side here. It just says, our strong determined young lady at 15, as you face your GCSE year, you're learning what brings you joy, devouring books and baking up a storm. You're thoroughly enjoying English and business studies and considering journalism at college next year. And this is just a great way to put down um, where your children are at that point in their life. Things change, but at the moment that's what she's enjoying. So it's great to have that to look back on. I wish I'd done it when they were younger as well. I mentioned that on James's video. So just gluing down these ephemera pieces onto each of those quadrants now before I carry on with the main photo. So as I mentioned, just pulling pieces to build up these clusters around the main photo. And I still want to keep to the colour quadrants that I've chosen for this layout. So just adding the blue bits to the top cluster here and then red bits to the bottom cluster. So gluing those down as I go. And just trying more and more things because, you know, I seem to want to add a lot to my layouts at the moment. <laughs> This button goes up on foam just to add some dimension so everything's not flat to the layout. I really like doing that. Just use a little bit too much, so just chewing off that corner there so it doesn't show. And these laser cut pieces are incredible. That string really does very, look very lifelike. But it's just printed paper. So now working on this bottom piece, that uh, now and always circle is a chipboard circle. Um, the leaves are from the laser cut pieces, of course. And then we've got that Hello Happy um, little word strip, which again is from the laser cut pieces, I think. Could be from the ephemera, actually. That's the problem when you pull things out, you quickly forget where they were from. Um, trying this flower up there, but I, do, I don't really want a flower on the layout, as I mentioned before. It's not a florally layout. We're on the beach, for goodness sake, so not flowers this time. <laughs> so um, this chipboard piece that says embrace life again works really nice with the theme of the layout that I'm going for. 
about Amelia's life as it is now. Um, this banner says awesome times and it just, it fits nicely. The, the phrase is nice enough um, and it brings the eye to the left of the layout there and sort of extends the corner, the diagonal corners that we've got with those two um, clusters, the aqua and the red. So another chipboard piece, this little chipboard heart goes on there. And now coming back in with the tickets to add a ticket to the bottom. I didn't like that space that I had on, above that Hello Happy word strip. So I just wanted to fill that in with something and this ticket works nicely. And because you've got all the different shades of red, it's really lovely to add that there. So just having a quick look through to see if there's anything else. I just feel like that gap needs to be filled there, but it doesn't. And I'm just looking at the layout now, the completed layout, and it looks fine. I don't know why I felt that I needed something there. I fiddle about with these words, hello you, for a little while, thinking that I want them above that journaling, because I just feel like there's something missing. The balance isn't quite right on the layout. But as it turns out, it's not actually there that I need to add something. It's the top right-hand corner. Um, once I realise that, I, I will add a title. In the meantime, I want to add some black ink splats. So just going in with my black soot watered down, to add some controlled, well, it's supposed to be controlled splattering. I just wanted it around the journaling and around each of the four quadrants. But uh, when I get to the red one, I try a different technique of flicking the brush and it's just a disaster. <laughs> it sprays everywhere. But um, not so awful that it ruins the layout, but I was annoyed here. Do you see how I flicked the top of it and it just splayed outwards and created these long splats rather than the spots that I was after. But. Um, just one of those things I'm not going to let it ruin the layout for me I still love this layout so going in with the date stamp at the bottom of the journaling because I still feel like there's something missing that it just feels a little bit disjointed and this is where I realize that I need a title at the top so I'm just using these very old scenic root um, alphabet stickers I wanted something big and bold and black and it, I'm just writing be you always and I use this full stop to emphasize the words be you um, and then the word always, I use some really old Lily B miniature stickers. They were on a 12 by 12 sticker sheet. They were absolutely amazing. I'm so sad that Lily B is no longer going because they created gorgeous, gorgeous things. Um, Scenic Root as well. It's um, sad how all these companies have gone. Anyway, new ones have come in their place. So <laughs> I'm happy about that. So um, just finishing this off now, I'll leave you with some close ups at the end. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, as I say, please do check the description box. Give me a like and a subscribe if you enjoy what I do. Other than that, I shall see you again tomorrow for a very different video because we finish with 30 days of sketches. Thank you so much again, Christy, for all your work on this. It's been wonderful. Thank you for letting me join in. And as I say, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.